What's up, man? How you doing? I am well, sir. And yourself? I got to tell you, that was some random present to get on a Tuesday or whatever it was. That was, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty interesting. Yeah, uh, <laughs> definitely piqued that, my interest. I was like, all right, Terry, I see what you're doing out there. Man, I've been listening to you for five years talk about online business, and I have an idea that doesn't look anything like online. Oh, we can make it online, bro. We can make it online. Because that's That's, been my biggest fear. I I waited months to send you that because I wasn't sure. Ah, Um, I'm not joking because I just, this is what I can do. And I don't know how this becomes online. Well, you know what? We'll just, let's just, let's just roll right into talking about it since we've already started talking about it. Cause that, (laughs) cause that was good banter. That was good content. We're welcome back to the flip lifestyle podcast. Everybody. We're just going to leave that in. (laughs) <laughs> I've been listening for five years, waiting to send it. Yeah, man, we'll just start the show. I'm Shane Sams. This is Terry. Hey, how do you say your last name? How do you pronounce uh, Magine. that? Magine. Magine. Okay, I just yes, want to sir. make sure I didn't say it right. So You're good. For, for, we're recording right now. We're just going for it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> My podcast is super laid back. Um, I'll tell you what was interesting. So for the, for those listening into the podcast right now, last week I uh, uh, opened my mailbox and there was this big box in there, okay? <laughs> and uh, and I was like, what in the world is this thing? And we opened it up and it was this big giant book, like a big like a like a like a big old looking book. And I was like, is this a book or a box? Like what is going on here? And uh, for those of you who don't know this, I'm a sucker for like subscription boxes. Like I get this little uh, I get this little thing called cigar box or something every month where it sends me four premium cigars and then the guys that have the uh, it's cigar club, that's what it's called. And what they do is they send you the box. There's four cigars in it. And over the month, their podcast is reviewing those cigars. So each week, the gimmick is you're going to listen while you smoke that cigar to see what they think about the cigar. So if you don't have buddies to sit around with and smoke cigars and, you know, geek out and be an aficionado, you got those guys. And I, I thought I mean, that, stuff like that, I always love. Uh, the bridge between the material <laughs> plane and the online cybersphere. So I get this box in the mail last week. I open it up and it's full of like, like greeting cards. You know what I'm saying? Like with really cool messages. And then you sent me this amazing like letter, which we'll unpack as we go about like, you know, how it was kind of like cards you wished you had sent your wife or something like cards. And you were tapping into this, you know, we always tell everyone, um, everyone has gifts. Everybody's got experience, skills, knowledge, things they pick up along the way. And you had a really interesting backstory while this was kind of like your superpower was writing these like these like cards. So we're we're gonna start there. Okay. That's that's uh Terry's a member <laughs> of, T- Terry's a member of the flipped lifestyle community. He's 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 in there trying to f- get this idea, trying to get his entrepreneur game on. And you got my attention, bro. Okay. So real quick. <laughs> <laughs> Terry, tell everybody real quick where you're from and uh, kind of a little bit about your background and maybe a little bit about this potential uh, product offer. Okay. Um, I live in Southeast Missouri, been here about 20 years. Um, uh, background, uh, married, three kids uh, over the course. I was, uh, I've always been a full time employee. Uh, you know, I always had a job, but I was also a full time pastor. So, mm-hmm. 15 years I was a senior pastor, but for 25 years I've been an executive chef. Um, okay. So, so things kind of have changed a lot over the last few years since COVID with the chef and everything. And I, I, I anyway, I, I got sick, spent a little time in the hospital, uh, septic, and, and it changed everything about my career. Hey, when did that happen? That happened to me back a couple years uh, ago. That happened to me in 2020. Uh, okay. The heart of summer, we, we obviously everything was shut down. And over the 4th of July weekend, I started getting a fever, not feeling well. I just thought it was a fever. It turns out I had had a bladder infection that backed up into my kidneys and then into my blood. Oh my so gosh. Was, yeah. Dude. So I was septic uh, by the time the hospital and everything, of course, everybody was extra cautious. By the time I got to the emergency room on Tuesday, I was septic and they almost lost me. I spent 10 days in the hospital. Bro, we've got the <laughs> same dude. I'm telling I in 20, I think it was January of 22. Um, I had been on the road, like speaking and I came mm-hmm. home, um, you know, it's the end of 21. So we're still fresh COVID's crazy and everybody's still doing all that stuff. And like, I got home and same thing. I got a fever and I thought, ah, sleep it off. No big deal. And that fever just kept, it would get higher and higher. It felt like the more Tylenol and ibuprofen I took, the higher the fever would get. 
And I went in to get some, uh, to the emergency room, sat there for nine hours in the emergency room. It was like a, it was like a COVID outbreak or something. And bro, I, they were drawing blood and I passed out and it was the same thing. My skin, I had, I think I, I don't know if it's the same thing, but I had staff in fact, they found staff in my bloodstream and it was making me like go septic. I was there for nine days, dude. Like, man, I, I did 10. it's exactly the miserable. same story. I mean, and and yes. like the, the fever on that is crazy, but stuff like that will put you in perspective. Like we are, we are not guaranteed every day, people, man. I just lost a dear friend of mine a couple of weeks ago. Um, he passed away and that experience. And it sounds like your experience. It makes you start thinking like, I got to do what I got to do now. I can't wait to start a business. I can't wait to raise my kids. I can't wait to be a spouse. Like I got to live my freaking life, even if it's hard because something like, I, I thought I was gone, bro. Like day four, I, they were like, literally, I was like, am I going to be okay? And they wouldn't say yes. And I was like, <laughs> wait, what? <laughs> like, what is happening, man? Yes. So I'm, so I'm glad you're here with us, bro. I, I feel your pain. We'll, we'll have to get a badge for our shirts. <laughs> say we went through the trenches together on that one. Yes, dude. sir. It's crazy, Absolutely. man. Yeah. Yeah. So it was, it was, that was, that's happened. And that was kind of a real shocker. And I, I couldn't really be a chef after that because it was difficult to stand on my feet for 18 hours a day. And, and it really began, that's, I really started taking a look at my life. Just like you just said, the problem was I, we had already gotten to a point where my marriage was pretty much over. Mm. So now I'm taking this look at, at where I am and what I've just gone through. And then I spent, uh, I call it an autopsy. I did an autopsy on my marriage, basically. You know, what went wrong, what were, what I should have done, this and that and the other. In the meantime, mm. we have three kids that are becoming adults. I have a son that just got married last year. Mm. So I start churning all this over in my mind over the last couple of years. And I realized I have, my wife has said, I've always had a gift for being able to write cards. Back when we first started dating and I would give her cards, we would go to things. She was like, no, here, I bought the card. You fill it out. I don't know why I can pour sentiment into just a few sentences, but somehow I can. Don't ask me to write long form. I can't do it. Mm. Uh, but 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 in a card. So that's always kind of been something that I do. And and so I. Re- so does that mean you're a short order cook? <laughs> 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 you see what I did there? I saw. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't resist it. Like, I'm, I'm, a dad, I'm a dad joke aficionado. I'm not really funny at all, but like, I just love the, any moment I can squeeze in a joke like that. I'm like, <laughs> you know, short writing, short order. Guys, hear me out, people. That was funny. Okay. If you're listening to this in your car somewhere, don't crash from the <laughs> hilarity. Okay. All right. Anyway. All right. And I'll, and I'll, and I'll test this. I, I think what impressed me, um, was not just the, uh, the giftology nature of it. Like I'm going to send Shane this and let him, let him check this out. And it was a cool box and everything else. Um, but inside the cards were just super heartfelt. And it was like, it was interesting the the angle you come from too, because, you know, I've talked to a lot of entrepreneurs and I think there's a parallel here. I think sometimes the best entrepreneurs are the people who have failed at something. They they've went through it and they can truly look and see what went wrong. It's almost impossible sometimes to see what went right. You know what I'm saying? I just don't think oh, we're yes. hardwired to do that. We look backwards, even in our own business. Like sometimes I look at my business and I'm like, how am I here? Like, how do I speak? How do I podcast? Like, how does this work? Like, I don't understand. You don't always know exactly why it hits, but you can always see why it fails. I mean, you can look back with 2020 yes. hindsight and rip yourself apart. And it was interesting because, you know, you would think, how am I going to help someone with marriage? If my marriage failed, but then that's exactly who the best person who's been experienced that is, is to help someone because they see what it was. And I felt it when I was, I was looking through all the months I was reading ahead. I didn't wait for it, but I was reading ahead on the cards and it was, it it did feel like, so it felt like a box of wisdom. It didn't feel like a box of knowledge and it felt infinitely valuable. Like, man, if you could say, Hey guys, if you'll just take a year and do this, your marriage won't fall apart. Cause this is why mine did like, that's, that's, that's pretty strong, man. So, so you, you've had this idea in your head since the marriage was over. Yeah. It's been stirring around for the last several years. Um, I developed kind of a philosophy as I was raising the boys. My, I have two sons and a daughter and mm-hmm. I kind of developed this philosophy about us guys. And from that, I started thinking about what we had just gone through and were going through. And then I thought about my parents and their 60-year marriage. And, and all of this just kind of became this, this melting, you know, this goo that was just whirling around in my brain. 
and out of that, I really thought, okay, what could uh, that box I sent you, I could see that as something I would want to leave for my sons to help mm-hmm. them as they grow into men and husbands. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Sure. We went through early on, she and I went through a six year stretch of, uh, it was six years that most people wouldn't believe if I explained it to them. And, and it got to a point to where we, we really didn't even feel like a couple, a husband and wife anymore. We were like comrades shoulder to shoulder in, in a foxhole, just covering each other's back. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes and we sense. Just had, it made this crazy six years. And then out of that, now we've got three kids and we're off to the races, raising them, homeschooling them. I'm working two jobs. It's just one thing after another. And along the way, we realized we're not the same people anymore. Because mm-hmm. you take those five, six years of, of really hard things and then add 15 years of growth on that while you're trying to raise the kids and trying to get through school and doing all the things that comes with that. And we realized that we had we had just grown so far apart. It just it wasn't we weren't the same people. I can totally attest to that, man. You know, like we Joss and I have been married for uh, we've been together for 25 years. We just celebrated our 20th anniversary. Congratulations. Thanks, man. And um, like but like, you know, you look at all the times you know, good and bad and what they add up to. And I heard this speaker one time say something super interesting about, about marriage, but I kind of have applied this to my business and everything else is you literally like our body, the cells in our body, you know, I think you have a new layer of skin, like every couple days or something. And like all the cells in your body, except for like, I think some of the neurons, literally replenish themselves every seven to 10 years, right? Like you, you are physically not the same human creature that you were 10 years ago. That's just how our bodies function. And then like, if you think about that, like think about the changes in your body, the changes in your mind, the changes in your experience, the change in everything. We are not the same person every 10 years. Our marriage is not the same entity every 10 years. Our business is not the same. And what we got into it for is not always the same. It's got to evolve and change. But his point was, you have to be proactive with your partner to fall in love with them again every 10 years, because that's a different person. And so are you. And if you're not working on it in like learning why they're different, learning how to and doing the things like you're talking about doing, that's when you drift apart because you get into this other stuff. One of my friends, I was uh, talking to him the other day about his marriage. We were just hanging out and um, and his uh, him and his wife were having not tension, but they were feeling disconnected. Right. Sure. And and, um, and he said that he talked to his wife and she said, well, here's the thing. I've got the kids. We've got work. We've got social responsibilities. We've got all the things that we've got going on in our life. And I know we're good. And that complacency man pushes it to the sides. Kind of like what you're talking about. You end up, you end up with a roommate instead of a, a, a bed mate. You know what I'm saying? No, absolutely. And it, it's not, there were no more moral failures between she and I, there was nothing oh, like that. It, it was just life happened. And we were so busy doing life that, that we forgot to just, just be a guy and a girl. Yeah, and man. you know what I mean, and and yeah, so man. that's the whole idea behind this. Um, and so I'm convinced um, that guys go through life in it with a certain mentality. They have it from childhood. Uh, I've watched it in my boys, and then I've taken this time to go back and look at it. So, so when I was a kid, I loved baseball, and and I can remember standing in my yard holding a baseball bat. I could close my eyes, and I could see myself stepping into the batter's box. Well. Everybody knows this. I was stepping into the batter's box. It was game seven of the World Series, bottom of the ninth inning, three, two outs, bases are loaded, and I get to be the hero in my mind and hit the home run, right? Right. I, I always was the hero. Every time I envisioned that. Well, I'm from Kentucky, so it was always a free throw at the national championship. You know what I'm saying? But so I get what you're saying. I'm picking up what you're putting down, Terry. You know what I'm saying? One of my dear friends, he's a he's a Pittsburgh Steelers fan. And for him, he was he became Lynn Swan when you know with the, with the game winning touchdown in the Super Bowl. Yeah. So we all but we all have that. So so we want to be the hero as boys. Well, when we grow up, we still want to be the hero. Yeah. So we want to be the hero for our wives. So so I kind of went through my marriage, and this was difficult to to admit to myself. I would go into a new calendar year, and I never put this into verbiage until after. I would go into a calendar year. Her birthday is in January. So I wanted to hit a home run in January with her. 
because that yeah. made life good for us. We were on good terms. I'm winning with her. There's no tension between us. You know, there's there's intimacy. There's all the things, right? Well, February and Valentine's, I want to hit another home run. That's mm -hmm. going to carry us into March, and then April's my birthday, and then June is our our anniversary. And I would go through my year with her, just trying to hit a home run every now and then. Yeah. And so that box you got, I try to imagine that as I, I would like guys to start stacking singles. That's why I yeah, call it man. stacking singles. <laughs> you, because it's a great you can, analogy, dude. Yeah. You can win with four, you can score a run with four singles just as well as you can with a home run. Yeah. And they're easier to hit. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Much easier. It's, Absolutely. Just, just be consistent. That's all you got to do. You only got to hit 300 to get in the Hall of Fame, people. You know what I'm saying? 30%, baby, is all we're looking for here. But like, and uh, and like, they're not all going to be home runs. So if you're banking on all the home runs, it's not going to work. You know what I'm saying? Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, a great quote I heard recently too. Um, you know, I'm always like listening to podcasts, studying people and, and trying to up level my personal development game. And like, I heard a guy the other day say, you're best equipped to help the person you used to be. And you, you know, you, you probably saw this coming in the last year or two. Right. Like a lot sure. of guys see, you know, that they're looking, they're looking forward at their last year or two. You're looking backwards at the last year or two. Yes. And, and by turning this into some kind of business with a mission to like, Hey, it's a cautionary tale, but it's, but it's actually like a really practical, uh, foundation stone. There's going to be more to turning that box into a business. The box is not a business. It's just a, it's a, it's a feature of the business, right? Like okay. that's part of it. But like being able to look back and say, hey, guys, look, I fell apart. Here's why being and I love how vulnerable you were in the in the letter that you wrote me and how vulnerable you're being like I'd hear like that vulnerability is like, listen, I can you know, some people are like, I have the perfect marriage and they're on Instagram and they're all <laughs> and they're and they're all good looking and ripped and beautiful and everything's Instagram famous and good and ha ha, ha you know, but like but like, you know. Not everybody's like that. Not everybody, not everybody, you know, who wants to learn from a guy that got it all right? You all just exactly. got lucky. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I want to learn from someone who's been like shot in the back with an arrow. So I know which angle they're coming from. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I think one reason we became good teachers of online business is because we've made every possible mistake you can make twice. And it's like, I can literally, I can't tell you how many times I'm coaching people. And it's just like, yeah, don't do that. Please, God, don't do that. Please, please. Let's just, let's just, let's just lay that down and let it go. Right. You know, one of the things we're passionate about at Flip Lifestyle is we truly believe in our heart of hearts that everyone has an idea that they can monetize and they can use the internet to find their audience. Like that's, that's the way the world works now. They're almost, you know, used to, we used to say start an online business. We still say that. But every business is online now. The local insurance guy is marketing online. The, uh, your local gas station is shit throwing up sales. Like everything is an online business because that's how we find more people to buy our stuff than the people that are just living down the street from us, right? And our passion is you take an idea like this and we figure out the components that always add up to an online business over time. Sometimes it's a short time. Sometimes it's a long time. But most of the time, if you just stay with it long enough, whatever long enough is for that industry, something good can can happen Like because of that. And you have all the ingredients here of a great idea. Number one, you have a pain and a problem that you're addressing, right? It is painful when a man is in a marriage that is failing and he feels it failing right? That is a pain that that person wants to stop, right? You have a really good solution that's based on real world experience of your marriage not working out because you didn't do the things. And I love the language, the branding of uh, when you tell your story, you must always say, I did an autopsy on my marriage. That is brilliant language because it's like so visual like I could picture a webinar where you pull up a slide of some dude doing an autopsy <laughs> on a body <laughs> and it just says marriage on the sheet instead of John Doe on the toe or something like that. Right. Like guys, you know, here's what you're going to be doing in about a year and a half, unless you get into my monthly membership, that's a year and a half. And then we're going to try to pull this out of the fire real quick or the crematorium, whatever we're getting into. You know what I'm saying? Um, so I love the story and all ideas. Uh, we start with a great story because you're going to tell your story in front of as many people as you can. I've been telling the same story since 2014 
about how we were school teachers that figured out how to make our entire living online and then helped other people do it. That's the story that I tell. It's the basis of all of Flip Lifestyle, Shane Sam Show, everything that we do, because it's our story and it's our solution to a problem. The problem we solve is you don't have enough income and who has enough income with all the inflation and crap we got going on right now, right? So use your skills, use your gifts and go start your own thing and make some extra money. You've got this, like guys, give me a year and let's take this shot to save your marriage before it's too late. There's a lot of urgency in this to be able to push people through. So you got a problem you can solve. You have a really good solution or the, at least the foundation that we're going to, we're going to build on the box. Okay. And then the next thing we've got to do to get this idea is how we're going to create an audience for the, well, let, let's do this. Let's look at the offer first. Okay. Have you thought of anything else that you're going to add to this box? Because I don't think the box with cards is enough uh, by itself, like to pay, you know, 50 bucks a month for or whatever it costs to ship that box. You know and I said? Well, we'd have to figure that out. Um, there's probably digital delivery versions of it, too, where they can download the cards and print them out themselves. Like there's different ways. What else have you what, what else have you thought to include in this? Um, well, that I thought about, you know, there if somebody wanted to is when they're filling it out, I could personalize the boxes. You know, mm -hmm. that box you got, imagine, you know, that first sheet that it's the one that if she found the box, it's where that letter's notes written to her. Yeah. You know, a lot of times wives have a pet name. I could personalize it and put a pet name in there. Yeah. Um, I could add additional cards. I love writing the cards and I, the design that I have on the existing cards, it would always be a changing thing. Yeah. I don't want to go to a store and buy a card that's got flowers all over it. That's covered in glitter. Cause it doesn't look like a card that a guy would go buy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I like the idea of developing cards that men would buy or would want to give. Yeah. And then of course, I do all the writing in them. I think the box itself, the outside was perfect. The inside, I know, I know it was just a mock-up to show me the concept. Um, but what I liked about it was I think you could, I like the simpleness of the cards. There were no pictures on them. It was just white folded in half. You know what I'm saying? It was just really clean. Like even some high quality, just basic cards you could print on. And, and then you pick like a better, like a, like a nicer font, like maybe some kind of, you know, a different kind of font. You could figure out how to do that. And, and then the personalization is easy because they can just fill out a form and type in all the stuff that you need to do for them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Cause, cause it is going to be the same messaging per box. It's just a different person that they're kind of addressed to. Right. Um, but you could totally clean that up. Like for sure. What what else what, what else on top of the box have you thought about doing? Well, I'm still I'm still trying to figure this out. And I'm listen, you and I are the only two people on the planet that have seen those. That's okay. it. <laughs> or whoever right. you may have showed it to. One I out of eight it. billion, baby. That's what I like. I showed it to Jocelyn. I showed it to Jocelyn. I printed enough to have two. Here's mine. And I sent you to your only because I, I've been listening to you for five years and I'm like, there I know there's this could help people. For I sure. just don't know how to get there. Yeah. So, so that's what I've got so far. I, I'm not even sure what the next step is. We don't have to figure all this out right this second, but like you know, in the flip lifestyle blueprint, you know, after we come up with an idea, your your past idea, this is the idea. I I want to help men who are two years away from marriage crumbling and they can feel it coming. Do what I wish I could have done to save my marriage. Uh, and I want to facilitate them and equip them to be able to go do that. That's a powerful goal. Now, the the product itself usually has to have three things in it if you're going to do online, right? Content, community, and coaching. Okay. Okay. So the the box, I I, I would imagine the box. You know, bo boxes are tricky because it it gets expensive making them. It gets expensive. You got to you got to streamline that process. I mean, we used to do a paper newsletter, and it was a chore. Um, you got to figure out how to get the box, how to get the cards in the box efficiently. You got to get them mailed out every month. You know, you got to think to yourself, what if I had a hundred people paying me for this and I had to ship a hundred of these every single month, right? So we're going to think about that, but it, there's also the things that are happening, you know, like besides the box, like, you know, I think the, it's one thing to get a box once a month that has your, or maybe you, maybe you send it to them for a year and you charge for a year membership or something, right? Cause you want to get them that whole, that whole box. I, I think what I would do <laughs> to make it more subscription based is I would send them the box and the first month in the box with the letter on top. And then each month they would get a little envelope that had their cards for that month in it. So it'd be something that they 
like got. You know what I'm saying? Because that gives me a reason to pay monthly. If I just have the whole box and I got the whole year, I don't know what I don't know what I'm going to do with that. Right? I don't know. I don't know if I'm just going to quit the next month or or whatever. Right. So, so let's just start there. We can change it later. But like, imagine I get this box in the mail. It's, it's the it's the I love the secret book because I can put it on a bookshelf. That was brilliant. The way you had it in it, like a little secret book. That was so smart. And then, uh, so they've got this box. It's hidden. It's got the letter in it. And they've got their cards like for that month or whatever. Well, then you send them the cards for February. Maybe there's two. It's not super shipping. It's, you know, they get, they get an envelope. Very like nondescript. So that you're the you know the the maybe the wife doesn't open the mail and she's like oh I, here you got something in the mail it's just plain envelope nothing fancy right and then they pull those cards out and they go hide them until they are ready to give them to the spouse now in between I think that this methodology at the you know your your post mortem after your marriage like your course could be called mar- a marriage post mortem. Or something, whatever that word is, and it's like you know, like, and I think that the you need a course inside of this membership community. Well, looking back, like with twenty twenty hindsight, like teach me, like why was Valentine's Day important? What what else besides these letters can you share in your wisdom? Like I wish I would have blank. They could still be in the months. Like it, it would almost be cool if you, when you logged in, there were twelve courses. And you had 12 topics, and it was just like January, February, March, April, May, June, July. So when I come in, I see whatever month I'm in. I'm, I'm already like programmed as a consumer now. Like, well, oh, crap, I joined in March. Cool. I'm going to get the March box. Let's look at the March training. And in March, you talk about the topics are whatever you want them to be, but you title them by the month. Because then it's like a lesson every month. Like this, Like I'm reading this book uh, called The Way of the Superior Man. And I read through it once and it's got like, it's, it's more like a bunch of blog posts than it is a book. They're like a page or two long or whatever. It's kind of like reading like Marcus Aurelius or something. And like, so you can read one page a day. So I went back and I'm like, I'm going to try to practice one of these things a week. That's kind of what I'm doing right now with this book. Right. So I, on Monday, uh, uh, every day for a week, I just read what that one, I read that chapter over and over. And then I go try to practice it like in my real life. Right. So I I feel uh, that's the vibe I feel from a content area is your you need to figure out the biggest 12 lessons you learned from the autopsy. And those are the 12 things you teach. So this now becomes a personal development course that's done once a month. And then they have then they have objectives like give your spouse the card, um, do these activities. You know, maybe it's like I wish I had more date nights. I'm just picking things out of my head. Sure. I I, I wish I told my wife she was beautiful more. Well, that's your goal this month is to tell your wife she's beautiful every day. You know what I'm saying? And like, give it this process of change over time where it's not overwhelming. All you got to do is give, give her two cards and do this one thing this month. And they, and their spouse will start looking around month two or three and going, who are you? What are you doing? Is this, you know, that's the goal is to get them to ask you like who you are. You just give them these things to do. Maybe, maybe it's maybe it's a one video per month and they have like four tasks and they do one task a week. You know what I'm saying? Okay, sure. You record it once, you program it once, you upload it into Kajabi, you've got a course, you're ready to go. The next thing I would say is these guys, I know that in times, you know, we're Joss and I are as open as if anybody can be. I We love each other to the moon and back. She is my eternal soulmate, but we also bring out the best in each other and occasionally the worst. You know what I'm saying? I mean, yeah. Oh, yes. and, we've ha- and we've had those seasons where as a man, I just don't know what she's thinking as a woman. She doesn't know what I'm thinking. Masculine, feminine, button heads, you know, women are from <laughs> Mars and Venus and wherever, wherever we're all from. And I know that in those times, that's the times I've felt most alone. Because as a man, you're supposed to, we're, you know, supposed to know what to do. We're supposed to be a warrior and a poet. We're supposed to be like all these things. And you get really confused. You're embarrassed to kind of tell your friends sometimes, you know what I'm saying? That you're struggling. These guys need a place where they can come. And that might look like, you know, it's a forum. That's the best, easiest, you know, way they can come in there and they can, you know, call it the vent and you can just come vent and you can be in there and kind of like, yeah, I remember a similar situation, but this is, makes it better. And maybe like a, you know, bi-monthly hangout, you know what I'm saying? Where you just get on a zoom and it's just like, all right, guys, what's going on? 
let's just talk about it. And like, you know, here's what I would have done. You, that's what you're always saying. Here's what I would have done for giving advice. And so you kind of become a marriage coach at that point, And you're, but you're just building a community where you can get these guys hanging out. Like it's just a bunch of guys trying to save their marriages. You know what I'm saying? Um, save your marriage. You, you know, it's university <laughs> or something like that uh, by, by Dean Terry. Right. <laughs> That's what that part of the product could look. And then honestly, man, I think that you should be like doing some coaching. Like you should let take some of those guys and uh, work one on one with them and be like, hey, you know, let's it's not just a box of cards. It's not just a, some courses and some suggestions. It's not just a community. It's like, you know, hey, you know, for 500 bucks a month, I'll, I'll talk to you every Monday or something. You know what I'm saying? Every we'll get on a call and we'll talk about what's going on in your marriage and how we can do that. And you can coach them up on what you would have done in those situations. That's a basic framework of what this could look like on the other side of turning this idea into an offer with the promise of an opportunity to save your failing marriage. Yeah, and the language is so easy too, because you're going to, you're not going to talk about like, you know, people who are having domestic violence or any of that. You're talking to people who are like, or roommate. Do you feel like your wife is your roommate? Because that's the first step to losing everything. And in about a year and a half, you're going to be looking for a new roommate <laughs> unless you sign up for this box. You know what I'm saying? Right. So sure. like that's, yeah. So that's, I think that's good. I think avatar wise, we just got to dial it in and say, these are men who are not having a bad marriage, but they're having a neutral marriage. They're stuck in neutral and they feel it. They feel the entropy setting in um, a little bit. Now, how do we get it out there to the masses? See, that's the thing. Like we work backwards. We come up with an idea, figure out the problem we solve. We dial in what the offer is. And you can listen back to this on the recording, right? We know our avatar, right? It's you probably two years before things went really off the rails because you're trying to get people in early. If you can save them there, you got them. You know what I mean? Sure. Now we got to tell the world about it. So have you thought about what kind of strategies for content or anything like that that you might do or like, what are you doing? There's only two ways to get attention. You make a lot of content or you buy ads and everybody's got to stop sugarcoating this and dancing around it. If you build the better mousetrap, they will not come to your door. The guy with the better mousetrap commercial always wins, right? Yeah. So like we've got to get it out to the world. So what have you thought about that? I haven't really made any decisions. I know there's the idea of podcasting. Obviously, I listen to you and I listen to a lot of podcasts. So yep. that's always been something that's an option. It doesn't have to be. I, I don't know. I'm not sure about that. I had you. You said I listened, I don't know, a month or so back. And you said, how did you say it? outside of your business? Always be thinking discovery to purchase discovery to okay. purchase. Yeah, yeah. That, I mean, that was something you said. I wrote that down. I made notes for thinking, OK, so uh, how do I get discovered? So yeah, yeah. I think about guys that are probably guys in their thirties or their forties. Um, and I'm not, not a specific age range, but that's just a guess, an educated guess, because those guys have kids they're trying to raise. They're really busy. They're yeah. trying to take on as much as they can, especially in today's economy. Oh, yeah. And so, so the one thing that is easiest, as much as we hate to say it, the one thing that is easiest to push to the back is the marriage. Yeah. Cause you trust your partner. It's going to be there. We death do us part. Yeah, that that death do us part doesn't count in. Nobody tells you what you're getting into when you get married. It's kind of I'm trying to tell my kids like as much as possible. Like, OK, this is all <laughs> not sunshine and rainbows, people, but it's awesome. You just got to treat it this way. Right. How how old were you when you uh, when your marriage ended? Um. Well, let's see. I'm 55. I was it was really starting to come apart in my mid to late forties. Yeah. I think, I think the forties is a tight demographic to kind of target and kind of pick up people in the you know, late thirties, early fifties, because the forties is when midlife crisis happens. It's when you start doubting yourself. It's when you've been in your career for 10 years. It's when the kids are getting into sports. It's when all that stuff is happening all at once. And that's kind of like, like the, that's the person you'll be able to speak to the best because that's where the autopsy was. That's where you saw it kind of sliding down, downhill. So that's good. Yeah, I think I think keep it simple, man. Simple scales. Nothing else does. You know, the first thing a podcast is such a great way to get your stuff out there. Like if you had a podcast, don't be clever with it. You need to have a podcast that screams save your marriage or something like that. You know what I'm saying? I don't even know if that would be a podcast that's out there, but like just the save your marriage podcast for men or something like that. Keep it super very clear on what it is. 
And then you've got like your save your marriage survival kit that we mail you every month. And you've got the save your marriage membership. And these words can be fleshed out, but like you can, you can look into it. Um, but like a simple podcast where maybe you, you can do it two ways. You can do what I do. Um, you can talk to your, your members and you can help the people that you want to serve. Like you can talk to guys who are, you know, struggling in their marriage and have those deep conversations and talk about the things that nobody else talk about. Maybe, you know, people in your life that you start with, um, you know, you start posting maybe some Facebook posts or some Instagram posts about saving your marriage, whatever it is, you start finding this little audience that you can build in. Um, but you can also interview marriage experts. Like we've got marriage experts in the flipped lifestyle, uh, community that are doing uh, different kind of coaching programs for marriages. Um, Eric Wooten's a great guy that has uh, 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 an awesome podcast about marriage. Like there's a lot of different people in the community doing this, but you can talk to people about you know, tips to save your marriage, tips to make your marriage grow, tips for date night. Like you can talk about all these topics. Uh, you can do it with guests or solo. And then once you get like 40 or 50 podcasts under your belt, okay, um, which can happen pretty fast. If you, you know, just want to, you know, you get, you get 20 under your belt, that's 20 weeks. You know, you've got 20 podcasts. Once you've got a little show and you're putting some content out there, you reach out to other people who are doing marriage podcasts and you say, Hey, I'd like to come tell my story, you know, dial in your story so you can tell it very quickly. And then, um, well, that was fascinating at the beginning of this, like as a guest, like to hear that, you know, my marriage fell apart and now I'm did an autopsy on my marriage and I help people. Uh, not kill their marriage and take it out by the woodshed like I did. You know what I mean? <laughs> sure. So a podcast is a very simple way to uh, just start making content. We all want the plan that's going to work. And honestly, what works is being consistent, prolific, and relentless. It's just, I'm going to consistently talk about this topic. I'm going to post content every week about it. I'm going to share something on social media every day. And I'm just going to push this thing until I find the people that the universe has for me to help out in the ether sphere of all the stuff online. Right. So, so I think, man, like maybe just flush out those courses and start a podcast and then that gives you legs and you can start learning as you go and, um, you know, and start researching and looking on Facebook groups and stuff where there's other people talking about marriage for dude, for men, this is definitely an avatar of male. You want to fo fo focus on the men. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's fascinating because I had all of this, you know, I've kind of heard it all over the years, listening to all your podcasts, but at the same time now it's me. Okay. What does this look like for me and how do I flesh this out for me personally? Yeah. So I, this is, this is very helpful. This helps me understand kind of a path. I hadn't even thought about like the 12 forces. If most people would just everybody listening, take your idea, start recording a podcast and talking about that topic and just do that. Just do that for 12 weeks. Just you thinking about the content is going to help you figure out what's going to happen with the products easier. And on top of that, someone will listen. If you post anything online, it's going to get a view. It's going to get, a, you might have one listener, a hundred listeners, 20 listeners, who knows what it is, but someone's going to listen and you'll start getting a feel for what you're talking about and find your voice. You know, it's one thing to find an idea. Then you got to find your voice so you can spread it all over the world. But finding your voice means taking the reps, man. It's just like when I started my speaking career, I was so nervous the first time I ever went out on stage. You know what I'm saying? And, na and now it's almost boring. <laughs> so I just, it's like, I've done it. I don't care if it's 8,000, 100,000, five people. It doesn't matter what it is. It's just like, okay, I know what I'm doing here. This is just what I do. Right. right. Same thing with podcasts. I, I'm over a thousand podcasts recorded. This is like, this is my day, baby. This is what I like to do the best, you know? <laughs> right. So, I mean, I think just start creating content, start working on courses, start fleshing out the box and, um, start putting the, the process out there. And hopefully a little audience starts forming behind that content where you can maybe start a Facebook group, you know, save your marriage for men, tips and tactics from a guy who failed to keep you from failing, you know? And then you like put that stuff out there in the world. What, um, in, let me ask you a, a, a question here. Like, it's, it, the, the, the the flip lifestyle blueprint tells you how to do all this stuff that we're talking about, right? But I often find that there's a fear or something holding people back. Are you feeling any fears right now or mindset struggles that might be the actual impediment to you, like going out and taking a shot at this thing? You know, I think what my biggest fear to this point has been um, 
is I now have three adult children mm. and I, I've always been a little fearful, just, just in putting the, the, the cards together and thinking this through fearful of what they will say if I put it out there into the world. Yeah. Yeah. Because we, that's the one thing I haven't done is we haven't really sat and talked about what we, I mean, their mother and I haven't sat and discussed with them all of the things that between the two of us. And yeah. so if I start having this conversation with the public, first I have to have that conversation with the kids, I think. And I'm yeah. pretty sure what I'm going to find is it's all stuff they already know. They, oh, they for sure. already come to understand, you know, because they're they're way smarter than we give them credit for sometimes, all the time. But 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 we just haven't had the conversation. So I think that's just me being uncomfortable with the idea. Yeah. Um, yeah that, of putting that, that out there. That discomfort. There's always discomfort in every time you do anything. And well, sure. what a powerful opportunity though, like you just said, okay, for your growth as a person, I haven't had these conversations with my kids. Well, you know, it's like, uh, go sit down with them and be like, Hey, you know, one thing I wish is that I knew what I didn't know then. And I think there's some things that if I could have done better, I think that things, the outcomes might have been a little different. And I want to make sure that no family has to go through what we went through. And I think I can help some people uh, save their marriages based on what I've learned. And I'm going to go do a podcast about that. I'm going to start talking about that. And I'm going to see if I can turn this into a little something cool where I can use my story uh, to make an impact. Right. I, I, I think that's a powerful example to your kids, man, of not being, you know, we, we all want to hold in everything, keep it off the public eye. But everybody's going through the same things, man. And there's and p most people are just waiting for somebody to say the quiet part out loud, you know? So it's a good opportunity for you to do that. And then you got to be careful with stories you tell when they involve other people. Of course, you get to pick what you talk about. Um, but it could be a, it, that comp, what this, this, if all this did with you starting this business was let you have that conversation with your kids and it, and it goes really, really well. That's a powerful benefit in your life and your kids' life and your grandkids' life someday that that would that would be really helpful for your family. And then if you get if you get to help some other people on top of it, now we're making an impact. You know, that's why that's why that's why we're giving our stories is so we can use them to make an impact for people. Yes, I, I completely agree. I just it's uncomfortable because I've never done it. Let it rage. Let the discomfort. <laughs> I, 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 I woke up this morning, dude. I had so much anxiety and I couldn't place where it was coming from. You know what I'm saying? And, um, and I just felt all in my, I mean, I woke up literally with like a ball in my throat and like my heart and my chest and I was beating hard. And I don't know if, I mean, maybe I had a nightmare or maybe I've just got a lot on my mind, you know, kids sports and school starting. So it's all chaos around here right now. Sure. And I went out on my uh, front porch. This is a practice that I have. Um, I went through, I went through a really bad depression about a year ago. Like I was like three straight months, man. I was in the pit of despair. It was crazy. I, it just hit me all at once. And you know, depression, uh, there there's, it's in my family and like we, we, I've, I've been through this, but not like this one, you know what I'm saying? And what broke me out of it, um, you know, it always start off the same way, anxious in the morning, spiral into depression, clear up by the afternoon, get as much done as we could. Right. Okay. But what helped, what got me through it, um, one was, uh, parts work. I was, I do this thing called parts work where you find like the parts and the traumas. It's called internal family systems. And, uh, it's like you, you identify the part of you that's depressed. It's not all of you. You're not all we're, we're our child self. We're our teenage self. We're our insecure self or our secure self. There's all the, the hero is a big part of all of our story in our, in our brain. So you figure out what part of you is really struggling and why, but then you don't try to make it go away. You don't make the discomfort go away. You don't make the anxiety go away or the depression go away. What you do is you take that feeling and you look right at it straight in the face and you let that feeling go and you see it and you understand it and you let yourself, let the anxiety be as anxious as it wants to be. And for me, it always dissipates when I do that. But when I fight it and try to push it to the side, that's a problem. So when you feel that discomfort, let it be discomfortable. I don't know if that's the word, but like, let it, let it be there and go do the thing anyway. And then the next time it's not, not comfortable, it's easier. So when you feel that anxiety, you literally for 
you just sit with it. Bro, I like, went out on my front porch this morning. Right. Sun coming up. Right. It's a little cool here in Kentucky. So I had to put a sweatsuit on, which was crazy for August. And I just sat there. No music. No nothing. And I just turned all of my attention to that anxiety. And I let it rage, man. And it was so uncomfortable. And it was so, it just made me want to throw up and call somebody for help. And, you know, and I, I, and I still to this minute, like, I don't even understand like where it came from. Right. Because in the body, we, Joss and I've done a lot of work on stuff like our mental health and things over the last four years. And in the body, like when that cortisol kicks to wake you up, that's the same chemical that causes you to be anxious. So your body is just assigning meaning to something and you've just got to sit there and sit with it. But by, you know, it took me about an hour this morning, just not relaxing, sitting and staring directly into the anxiety, not asking why, not time to figure out a solution, but just really letting it feel up the, up my spine, down to my heels, into my shoulders, to the tips of my lips and my tongue and my fingertips and letting it like be, say like, Hey, there's an anxiety here. Anxiety is always about something you love. So let it be anxious. It's just trying to make you take action to something you love. It may take you a while to figure it out. But once I got done, I got up and went to the gym and now I'm podcasting with you and we're doing our thing. Right. So take that discomfort right now and be like, I'm going to have this conversation with my kids and be like, Hey, I want to do something. Not that I'm the smartest guy in the world or knows, but I do know what I would have done differently. And I think if I share this out in the world, it would be very beneficial. I'll always honor you and your stories and will never draw attention to any of anything. You guys didn't do anything. It's all cool. And then be just really respectful about all any stories that you might want to tell. Or I would focus on the, what you wish you would have done more than what happened because we got to be careful about the dirt, you know, the tea spilling, but, um, but yeah, man, just feel that discomfort and do it anyway and get your stuff out there in the world. Yeah. yeah, because as I think through what you what you said earlier, I think it would be a whole lot of me saying what what I wish I would have done, or <clears throat> yeah. here's what I here's what I didn't do that I wish I would have. Exactly, it'll be a lot of that instead of yeah, no no dirt, no none of that. No 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 but no. We're yeah. telling we're, we're talking about what we wish would have happened, not what would have happened. So I don't see a problem with overlapping stories and lives. Sure, uh, much okay. with content. You can you can tiptoe around that. We do a lot too for our personal life. So of course, then there has to be some yeah some some distance there. And what you're putting out into the public. I think your first step is definitely create some content around this. It'd be cool to see you kind of develop a voice, start working on that product, you know, get in the blueprint just start at the beginning. You know, you already got your idea. Maybe, maybe watch that idea course to just kind of polish up and then go into offer. Re listen back to this podcast. Talk about what, 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 what do people get when they buy? Let's set that up and make that. And while we're doing that, let's, you know, record a podcast every week or a YouTube channel, wherever you want to put it, it doesn't matter, but start putting that content out there. Like write down 20 things you wish you had did and just start there and record 20 episodes and learn how to release them on podcast. You know, it's easy nowadays. You can use tools like Kajabi to just one click and you got a podcast out in the world. Right. You know what I'm saying? And start building, uh, building those things out, man, inside the community. Um, I, I, we're wrapping it up right now because I've, I've got another call here, and just I got fifth, I got flip lifestyle people back to back, Terry. Um, but this was this is an amazing idea. I think this is a really cool idea. Um, it's so needed. I mean, you got a big audience. Half the marriages in America fail. You know what I'm saying? So if you if you could go out and help a thousand men save their marriages and become better husbands and honor their wives, um, that's going to be a blessing that ripples out to their kids and everybody else in their community around them. Sure, absolutely. Um, awesome. Man. I wasn't. I just wasn't sure that it was a business that I could do online. So I appreciate this. Oh, it's this totally a business. Yeah, I mean, I I think you're you're definitely going to have to bend it. The bo you got to get out of the box is the product. Just remember that, okay? Okay. The box is a part of the product. It's not the whole thing. You're not going to make it just selling that box to people. But if there's training, if there's a community where people can hang out with other people going through the same thing, and if they can get access to you, if you can coach a little bit and get them, you know, right. membership of the group coaching area, then that that makes it an online business. And as soon as you start making content, you're a content creator. You just got to get more people to listen to the podcast. That's the game. All right, man. Uh, thank you so much. Cause I just, all I had, all I could see was the box and I didn't know where to go with it. So we got a direction time, now, baby. We just got to get in the community and build it. Let's do it, man. All right. <laughs> Terry, thank you hey, very much. dude, thank you for being on the podcast and thanks for being so vulnerable, man. This, this episode is going to help a lot of people take their idea too. I appreciate it. Thank you very much.
All right, guys, that wraps up my interview with Terry about his amazing membership idea. Man, what a cool concept and what a cool way to come through your story to come up with it. Like the worst thing that's ever happened to him is exactly what gave him the wisdom and the knowledge and the skills to go out and help other people before it's too late. And that's what a lot of these businesses, guys, we get so caught up in all the Instagram and all the online stuff and this, that, and the other, and the membership and the numbers and all that. But really, if you have an idea that can solve a problem and help people, you should pursue that. Because there are pe- there are there are marriages waiting out there for a guy like Terry to show up with wisdom and say, hey, guys, my marriage failed. I'm going to be totally open, honest, and vulnerable with you. So yours doesn't. That's turning that into something good. Uh, what could have just left him in the dust and left him in the ashes. And I cannot wait to help him build that inside of the flipped lifestyle community. We've got a lot of stuff going on in the flipped lifestyle community. We've got the flipped lifestyle blueprint where you can go learn how to start building, grow an online business, get your idea, take it to market. We got an amazing community. Hundreds of people have access to our community. They're in there all the time talking about online business. And we got a lot of other cool things going on that Jocelyn and I use to help people get out their ideas to market and make things happen. So if you want to check that out, have a flip lifestyle.com F L I P P E D lifestyle.com. We want to help you flip your life upside down. We don't want you to have work life balance. We want you to have life work balance. We want to see your ideas go out and cause a ripple in the world and help other people. And we want to do anything we can to share our journey, all of our mistakes, all of our successes and everything that we have available to us. Uh, to help you succeed as well. So check that out over at fliplifestyle.com. That's all the time we've got for this week's podcast, guys. Till next time, get out there, take action, and do whatever it takes to flip your life. We'll see you then.